Good afternoon, and thank you for that welcome. Um, cake or death, how to do theology like Eddie Izzard. I'm not just trying to step into big shoes, but high heels, so bear with me. Um, I'd like to start with one of my favourite Eddie Izzard quotes, and that is, if there was a God, don't you think he would have flicked Hitler's head off? Now, to my mind, there are only three possible responses to that statement. The first is, therefore, there is no God. And I'm guessing that not even the Church of England would be very comfortable with that one. <laughs> the second is, there is a God, but he's not very nice. And I'm thinking that's more Westboro Baptist than Greenbelt. <laughs> the third option is, there is a God... But for some unknown reason, he's not able to flick the heads off despots and tyrants. So I'm going to go with that one. And I'm going to um, demonstrate how that's possible with uh, the application of science. And this is probably the point to own up that after the age of 14, I didn't do any science at school. <laughs> um, but don't worry, because I've watched documentaries and YouTube videos, so it's OK. <laughs> I'm going to apply science to what I call the three O's of the Christian God. Omnipotence, omnipresence, and omniscience. Because we Christians, we like a God who is everywhere, knows everything, and can do anything, don't we? Um, so let's start with omnipresence. Do you know, omnipresence was not an issue for the ancient Hebrews. I'm going to take you back in time to the story of the Garden of Eden and show you that that's the case, okay? So scroll back in time. Here we are in the Garden of Eden. Okay, I've uh, finished the planet. I, I hope you like it. Um, I'm quite pleased with it. I'm going off for a well-earned break now. Um, but before I do, just a little advice. That tree over there? Mm-mm. I don't advise you to go to that one, because if you get into this good and evil, right and wrong stuff, it'll all go to hell in a handcart. So anyway, I'll see you later. Off I go. Definitely not into omnipresence in Genesis. We Christians, however, take comfort from the fact that God is everywhere and can see absolutely everything we do. Perhaps not everything we do, but you get my point. And physics helps us to see how God could be everywhere, because physics tells us that some things can be in more than one place at a time, but they have to be microscopically tiny. So you can have an omnipresent God as long as he's very, very small. <laughs> So I'm afraid we're going to have to lose that big, boomy Hollywood voice. Yeah? Because if he's very small, he's probably got a very high, squeaky voice. <laughs> Possibly only audible to dogs. <laughs> which might account for something. Fido, get them to fetch the ball. Keeps them out of mischief. <laughs> Ta-da! Omnipresent God proved by physics. Omniscient, or as I call it, the know-it-all God. That's okay for us, but again, the ancient Hebrews, mm -mm, no omniscient God. Back to the Garden of Eden. Okay, I've had my holiday, I'm back. Did you miss me? Hello? Oh, if only I'm omniscient, I'd know where they are. <laughs> oh, there you are. What are you wearing? <laughs> oh, you've been at the tree, haven't you? It, it wasn't me, it wasn't my fault. She made me do it. No, they didn't have an omniscient God. But Christian tradition likes a God to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. To sort this one, we're going to chemistry. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I watched a BBC, radio, uh, BBC Four documentary on this, so we're, we're, we're okay here. And um, we're going to look at how omniscience means being part of something, not just being there, but to know something, you have to be part of it, yeah? And we have the amazing, life-bringing, 
energy-creating oxygen, which is part of things by sort of going and getting stuck to them. So we can have an omniscient God if he's sort of like a divine limpet <laughs> that goes around going, Wee! Oh, oh, I know what you did last summer. <laughs> we've sorted omnipresence and omniscience. But the tricky one, of course, if we've got both of those, is how do we sort out not being omnipotent? And for that, we need the big guns. Quantum physics, string theory. You know, the one with lots of dimensions. Because I think God can be everywhere and know everything, but be in a different dimension. Yeah? So sort of like behind a two-way mirror. So it's maybe something like this. Oh, no. Look at my lovely blue planet. They're making a right mess of it. Oh, if only I could... Oh, Fido, keep getting them to throw that ball. <laughs> Jesus. No way, I ain't going down there again for nothing. <laughs> Don't you look at me like that. The last time they messiahed me and everything. Oh, <laughs> but the Church of England's going on about LGBT people now. Well, lesbians and gays, they haven't worked out what the B and T stands for. <laughs> you haven't been reading your own bookie wook, have you? Hmm? Not my problem. I'm Jewish. <laughs> oh, but when they get on to the T, they'll have a go at Eddie Izzard, and he's one of my favourites. <laughs> No, Dad. Men in the church have been wearing dresses for centuries. <laughs> He'll be fine. Anyway, I don't know why you're worrying about Eddie. He doesn't even believe in you. Oh. <laughs> See, we can have an omnipresent, omniscient God who is not omnipotent via science. But I'd like to go back to oxygen, because there's something I find fascinating about oxygen that I learned off that BBC Four documentary, actually. And it's this, that it is what makes us alive, it is what creates energy, and without it, we'd all be pond life. Or maybe that would be, we'd all be pond life. But as it does it, it also ages us and makes us die. So to reverse a cliche, what makes you stronger kills you. <laughs> which makes me think of a much older understanding of God way back in the mists of time when they called God Gaia, the great mother because they got that in the very act of creating life death came as standard so if there were a Church of England Airlines the menu wouldn't be cake or death no, it would be, here's your cake, sir. Uh, death comes as part of the price. <laughs> Thank you for flying Church of England Airways. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.